Okay, in a previous video, you saw how I retro brighted using paste in a aluminum foil box. Um, retro brighting inside. The sunlight is great for retro brighting. It makes things go faster for sure. But if you live in an area where, you know, especially towards the end of the year here in Oregon, where it's constantly raining, um, don't have the luxury of sun. So that's why I'm doing a lot of this stuff inside so I can do retro brighting all year long, not just on sunny days. So what I have here is a mixture 50-50 um, of um, Salon Care 40, um, the clear. Um, this is liquid. It's not that red Salon Care 40, which is a paste. So basically I mixed two of these with warm water. And I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but you can already see it reacting. There's bubbles showing up. So I have this case here. I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you clean the case before you do this because retro brighting does not go through dirt. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see about retro brighting this guy. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to basically put this in this solution. And I like doing large things submerged because it has an equal coverage. And now just in case, just to keep it from floating, I'm going to put this little weight on here on this little tiny corner. I made this cover. Okay, and there's two holes for two lights in it. So this cover is going to slide over this. And I don't even know we really need to do this because I don't think the, these lamps will generate enough heat to evaporate a lot of this, but you know, just in case. All right, so now we can put this cover on. And let's see how this works. All right. So we'll see how that goes and we'll check back in um in a day all righty so this has been roughly 24 hours let's go ahead and shut these lights off and see what we've got all righty So we have some improvement here, but you know, I'd have to leave this probably for another day or two because while there's been some improvement in it, the darkening has lightened up. It's just not worth the day that it's been in here. So, um, unfortunately there's no sun today and it's cold outside. So putting this outside isn't going to do anything. Um, and that's why we're trying to find if there's a good way to do this inside. So what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to treat this like the keys on the keyboard is I'm going to empty this and which is a shame because I can still see a lot of bubbles, which means the peroxide's still working. But um, if, and if there was a sun, if there was sunlight, I'd definitely put it outside um, just to finish it up. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and do this like the keys and just put the cream on it, um, put it in here, put the uh, cellophane or the plastic wrap on top so it doesn't evaporate, 
um, very easily. Um, but I'll throw it in the dry bin, just like I do the keys. And let's see how that works over a 24 hour period with the black lights on it. So I'm gonna empty, I'm gonna empty this out. We'll reuse this bin and, uh, and then see if that fares us any better. Um, because what I'm thinking is, first of all, this water is cold. You need heat. You need heat for the peroxide to work or react. So the fact that the water is cold, um, you know, is not conducive. So if I take the whole water element, the whole liquid element out of it, um, the black light should generate enough heat um, on their own to help the paste um, work on this. So, yeah, so let me get this all cleaned out and uh, we'll continue the video in, in a little bit here. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna treat this like the keyboard. Um, I lined this with aluminum foil we're going to smear this uh, cream all over it and then we'll throw some clear plastic wrap over it um, to capture it so this doesn't evaporate so it stays uh, uh, moist so to speak so let's go ahead and see how this pans out for us and we'll leave this in here for six hours or something like that and take a look at it. We might have to leave it for a day. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. The reason I don't cover it with saran wrap, the keyboard, is because what will happen is if you, uh, if any of this peroxide dries, doesn't stay moist on it, it will give you a marble kind of pattern that you just can't take off. I mean, it's just really difficult. Someone, a uh, subscriber indicated that um, the hot air gun from a desoldering station will sometimes help reduce that marbling effect. And I have no reason to doubt that um, for small scale, but for a larger scale, a lot of real estate like this has, I don't know if that will be conducive. So I want to make sure we have this nicely saturated in uniform manner. And we'll keep our fingers crossed. Let's get some of this here to Let's see how this goes. Put the cover back on here. And uh, put the black lights back on. And we'll check back about six hours and see where we're at. All right, so stay tuned. Okay, it's been about 15 hours here. So let's go ahead and see what we have. Well, this is looking promising. I don't see any splotching, marbling, whatever you want to call it. And I think this is ready to be rinsed. This looks good. Looks, looks really good. 
So let me rinse off of this, rinse off this peroxide here and see what we've got. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I rinsed this off and dried it a little bit and you can see that uh, this worked out pretty well. I could leave it a little bit longer and get it just a little wider, but I'm happy with how it turned out. It's pretty close, darned close to the original color. And uh, yeah, just don't want to risk anything going wrong. The whole trick to this whole thing. So the bottom line is considering the time of year where you don't have sunlight or it's cold outside because you do need heat um, of some sort. Um, I think this is a really good alternative to use a aluminum foil line bin, use the cream because the, um, the uh, liquid submersion didn't work very well indoors. I, I, I think it's because there's just not enough heat that, you know, flows through the water to activate um, or to, um, you know, make the uh, peroxide um, um, work the way it should. So using the cream, the only caveat to using the cream that's really important that you have to remember is you have to keep an eye on it because I'm telling you if the cream kind of dries in spots um, and it's left under the UV light, it will get a marbling effect. I think I have a previous video from last year sometime where I showed where that went wrong. Um, anyways, so that's the only thing you got to keep a sharp eye on it to make sure there's nothing wrong to put in the, in putting more of the paste on it. Um, if you see that it's starting to dry up, but, um, it's really bad if you let it dry and, um, you know, and, and it, because then you start getting splotches. So, um, I think this is a go. Let me put this computer back together just so you can see the final product. In the previous video, we did the keys. We retrobrided the keys in the same manner that we just retrobrided this. And so again, I think this is the winner um, in retrobriding indoors, at least for me, is, uh, you know, the UV lights and the cream. And I will leave the submersion to the outdoors on sunny days. And the reason I still stick with that is because submersion in the sun with the heat of the day um, will get the same effect in a couple of hours, whereas this took around 15 hours. So that's the huge difference is the speed of how, um, how fast the peroxide reacts, you know, under direct sunlight. All right. So stay tuned and be right back with the final summary. Okay. Summary, final product, beautiful. No blotching, no, no, no marbleizing, nothing. Um, the exercise of this is to try to retrobrite indoors. Why? Because probably, you know, a good three months out of the year, you know, here in Oregon, we we'll just get cold weather. It's raining, no sun. So retrobriting outside, is still my preference um, because it's faster and it doesn't cost anything outside of the peroxide. Retrobriting indoors takes a lot longer. This normally in the sunlight would have taken me about two hours to get it this white. Um, indoors, it took about 15 hours to get it this white, but it worked. And then I also don't use electricity when I'm using the sun. It's free. Um, you know, inside I need two lights and they suck up a little bit of electricity. I honestly don't know how much, but nonetheless, it's still using electricity. So those are the pros and cons. The key is one, the UV lights, two, that saran wrap to keep the moisture in. If the peroxide starts to dry, lay some more peroxide, check on it every couple hours. If it starts to dry, lay some more peroxide on it because if it dries and this area here is still moist, that's when you're starting to get marbling and blotching. Also, I wouldn't recommend using paste the method and wrapping the thing in saran wrap because the saran wrap can wrinkle and then it'll make the peroxide um, ununiform and that's what causes blotching as well. I have a video from about eight months ago where I showed that that happened to me. So there you go. Summarize in a quick little ramble. Um, hope you got something out of this and uh, yeah, there you go. Retro writing indoors. I always say life is short. Enjoy it. Live it. Peace out.